Hello everyone, I'm Mohamed Abdelaziz from Team Munich. Today I'll be addressing one main question, which is how long should an action sequence between n two states be in order for it to be cost optimal? And the reason I'm talking about this problem or I'm addressing this problem is because I think it, uh, it would enable set-based cost, cost optimal planning because it would tell us how long should we uh, unroll the transition relation to guarantee that we're not missing an optimal solution. Also, if we had good and tight enough bounds, we can use them to generate optimality certificates uh, by using the unsolvability certificates that a set solver would give us. Lastly, I think it's also theoretically interesting and inherently interesting. So in this work, I'll, uh, I tried to find some good answers for this question, and I also investigated theoretically and experimentally. Before I get into the details, I will first, uh, I will first introduce um, the setup, which is planning problems with costs. So such a problem is a tuple of four elements. The first one is delta, the second is C, I, and G, Delta is a set of propositional factor transitions, so it's a set of actions, each of which is just a pair and uh, of, of sets of um, literals, basically. So here, this is uh, such a transition system, and this is state-based. And you have a, a function C mapping uh, actions to natural numbers, which I call the cost. And you have a set of assignments to all, um, I is a set of assignments to all variables occurring in I, so it's uh, in delta, so it is a full state and it, I call it the initial state, and G is a partial state. And lastly, I would um, like to introduce some notation that I will use later in the slide. So the first member of that notation, or the first part of that notation is um, U of delta, which is the set of all full states. So the set of states that um, have a literal that covers each variable that ever occurs in delta. And then you have delta star, which is the cleaning closure of delta. And you have uh, that notation, to which I use to denote the state that results from executing an action sequence pi on um, a state x. The second thing I would like to introduce in the setup is the concept of a completeness threshold, or CT for short for the rest of this talk. Um, in general, for a problem whose solution is a transition sequence, a number is a CT if and only if we have the following. If there is a solution to the problem, then there is one with at most n transitions or n actions. CTs were firstly investigated by Amin Bia in 2001 for, in the context of bond model checking. And um, in that work, he um, introduced or studied two, two topological properties of the state space uh, as CTs. The first one is the diameter, and the second one is the, is the recurrence diameter. This work is about computing a completeness threshold for minimum cost action sequences that can reach a goal state from the initial state. So uh, we need to, to find a CT for this problem. Um, there are many interesting questions that could be answered, but I will focus on two things. How tight is a, a candidate CT, or whether it is a CT at all, and how effective can it be computed? Um, so now let me uh, start with, uh, with, with, uh, with the candidate bounds, or the candidate CTs. So if you have, um, if you have the guarantee that all the actions are, have non-zero cost, then a CT is the length of any action sequence between the initial state and the goal, and the goal. So uh, computing a CT in this case is as easy as computing a satisfying plan, which is easy given the current state of the art. But the problem becomes more interesting when you have a pro uh, when you have an action whose cost is zero. So in the coming slide, I will discuss a few possible CTs for this case. I'll primarily focus on topological properties of the state space, but I'll also consider some other properties of that given transition system. Um, the first. Um, such property is uh, is the diameter, which, and it is, I think, the most intuitive topological property, and it also is a complete threshold for satisfying planning as well as bound model checking of safety properties. So it makes sense for one to consider this whenever we try to find a CT. Uh, it can also be relatively effectively approximated using uh, composition techniques, on which I've worked for a number of years now. Thus, it... Um, um, it, uh, yeah, that's that's why, I, as I said earlier, it should be the first thing that you would consider as a as a as a, as a in this threshold. So the definition of the diameter is that it is the length of the longest shortest path in the state space of a, of the given factor transition system. And formally, this definition is written like that. So it, here we have a maximum and a minimum uh, two quantifiers. And so this one is is a maximum. So for every state in the full state and for every action sequence that you can ever build. You're looking for a, for another action sequence pi prime that can reach the same result if executed at x as the as the initial pi, as the pi that we got from here, and we're we're looking for the minimum length pi prime, 
and then taking the maximum amount of those. So that's the diameter, that's the formal definition of the diameter. Unfortunately, though, the diameter is not a CT for minimum cost action sequences if there are actions with zero cost. Uh, because for this case, there is no clear, there is no longer a clear relationship between the plan length and cost, because cheaper plans could be arbitrarily longer than the shortest plan. For instance, in this example here, we have three actions, pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, and the cost of pi 1 is 1, 2 is 1, and 3 is 3. And um, the diameter of the system is 1, because you can reach um, any state from any other state in one transition, if you can ever reach it, otherwise uh, you cannot reach it. But uh, the cost of the cheapest uh, action sequence that can take you from this state to that state is two, uh, while the co while the cost of of the of the longest action sequence whose length is bounded by the diameter is three, uh, because um, because here because if you take if you take one transition from here to there it's it cost three. So accordingly, the, the diameter cannot be at um, a completeness threshold. The second possible topological property is the recurrence diameter. And this has been extensively studied as a completeness threshold in, the, in again in the area of model checking, started with the work of Armin Bia. So it is in particular a completeness threshold for um, model checking problems of liveness properties. And it's formally defined uh, like that. So it is basically the length of the longest path not traver that doesn't traverse the same state twice. So here you just have a maximum, and then you have like for every state you take a path, and then that path shouldn't. For every state, you take an action sequence, and then action sequence should traverse two states twice, uh, the, same, the same state twice. It is indeed a CT for minimum uh, cost action sequences. Uh, for the proof of that, please check the paper. But there are a few problems with it. The first one is that it's very hard to compute. So it is MP hard for explicitly represented directed graphs, and it is non-deterministic, exponentially hard for succinctly represented directed graphs. It also cannot be a uh, compositional approximated using projections uh, of the given transition system, which is a very big problem. So this means that it cannot be practically bounded for any system, unless you already expand computation resources that, that are much bigger than computing an optimal plan in the first place. Another possible topological property is the traversal diameter. And I've introduced it in 2019 in the context of compositionally approximating the diameter. And it has the main advantage that it is it can be easily computed. So it is defined as, the, as, as, as one less than the largest number of states any path can traverse in the state space. So it's written like that. So here, this is, the, this is the set of states that a certain path traverses, and you just are taking the maximum and then removing the one. And, be, and it is an upper bound in a recurrence diameter, and it uh, can actually be an exponentially big, it can actually be exponentially bigger than the recurrence diameter, and that, that, that's why it's, it is a, also a a CT for minimum cost action sequences. But uh, the problem with it is that it can be very loose in practice. So it would be better if we can find something that is tighter. Another possible uh, property is the, is the sublist diameter, which I've introduced in, the, in, in 2015 as a theoretical tool to prove that the diameter can be approximated using projections recurrence diameters. Um, basically, the definition of this property is slightly uh, annoying because it doesn't really have a graph theoretical intuition behind it. So you have to bear with me. So yeah, if, if we let this notation denote that pi prime is a subsequence of pi or a sublist of pi, which means that all members of pi prime occur in the same order in pi, then the sublist diameter is the length of the longest, shortest equivalent sublist to any action sequence starting at any state. So it is basically like the diameter, except that Instead of, you're looking, instead of looking at any action sequence pi prime, you're looking for only subsequences or sublists of pi. So for instance, if you have this, uh, if you have this transition system here, the sublist diameter of that thing is um, three because you can, like, there isn't a sublist, there isn't a sublist of, uh, of this action sequence, pi one, pi two, pi three, to go from that state to that state. But it has many advantages, it, is that, which is that it can be completely uh, uh, bounded like the diameter, and in, in terms of tightness, it is between the diameter and the recurrence diameter. It's, in fact, it can be exponentially smaller than the recurrence diameter. And most interesting for this talk, it is indeed a CT for minimum cost action sequences. The sublist diameter sounds sound somewhat promising, but uh, since, since of its computational advantages and also that it is a CT, but there is, um, is, is there something that is even tighter or better than it? So in this case, I will, in, in, in this slide, I will introduce the subset diameter, which is a new property that I have defined in this work. 
It is the length of the longest, shortest equivalent subset, it's not sublist. Okay, so look at this. This is the main difference. Okay. Um, so um, for the same system that we uh, that we discussed from last slide, um, uh, if you have the sublist for it, the uh, sublist diameter for it at three, because there isn't any subsequence of that, uh, a sublist of that that can reach the same the state from that state. For that system, the subset diameter is in fact two because there is a subset of that state uh, action sequence that can reach this state from that state, and that subset is pi two pi one. So here, basically, the power of the subset diameter is that it allows you to reorder actions. So it's not just sublists, but it's sub permutations of sublists, basically. So also, I've shown in this work not, that not only that the subset diameter is a CT, but it is, that it is indeed the tightest CT that you can compute if you don't consider the initial state or the goal state. Um, in the last slide, I would like to just talk about some experimental results. Um, so I've encoded problems with cost as that formulae by adding cost reasoning to action preconditions and effects using binary encoding and binary arithmetic for costs. I won't be able to explain that because of the, ti of the time, but it's not a very involved encoding. Um, the goal of the experiments basically is to show that, uh, is to, to check whether in the case um, when we have uh, when we have zero cost actions, are the upper bounding techniques practical? And when we don't have zero cost actions, can the SAT based approaches in general act in par, uh, perform in par with a good A star heuristic? So, indeed, in the experimental results, uh, the SAT based approach outperformed the, the LM cost heuristic in a few uh, domains, one of which is the transport domain, which has some zero cost actions, but mo most of them are not, uh, have no zero cost actions. And the approach also performs well in most domains, even the ones that have zero cost actions. So it, it actually can, can compute the optimal plan, and sometimes it can even prove that it's optimal. So that's all for today. Thank you very much, and I look forward for your questions.